This is the Eli News where all eyes are on you. I'm Claire Chambers. And I'm Seth Smith. Now for some news stories. Every time you buy a newspaper, there is a hidden picture in certain newspapers. The picture will range from an eagle to a smiley face. If you find a picture in your newspaper, you will be rewarded. So buy as many newspapers as you can so you can find a picture. After a long lasting battle between the grades, to see which grade has the most block talk, the battle is officially over. Sixth grade is in first, eighth grade is in second, and pulling up the rear is seventh grade. Eighth, sixth grade will be awarded with extra break time in a free afternoon. Here's your chance to participate in the JMS election. It will be just like the real government. So if you're interested in politics, here's your golden ticket. Your form will have to be turned in by October 23rd. Mr. Hopper said that all students can't wait. We are so excited. To Noah with more news. Hello, my name is Noah Smith. And this is Nick Lee. And we are here with Eagle Eye News, the school's news show. We would like to ask a few questions concerning your trip to Bulgaria. How does it feel to represent the United States in Bulgaria for gymnastics? Um, it feels really good. It's a big accomplishment. Um, I'm really happy with myself. What does your family and friends feel about you traveling so far away to be in a big accomplishment? They're really excited for me. They think it's really cool that one of my, that I'm going to be representing the USA, Bulgaria. What do you do in your competition in Bulgaria? Um, I go out and I warm up and then they give me a few minutes and then we compete and then like when we're done we get to tell the people good job and cheer them on. What will happen if you win your competition in Bulgaria? Will you advance to the Olympics? Um, I really hope so. I'm not sure if I would be able to, but I really would hope so. How long have you trained for these competitions and where did you train? Um, I've been training for seven or eight years at Premier Athletics in Knoxville. What do you plan to do in the future? Keep doing gymnastics. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're certainly glad and happy for you. And this is Noah Smith. This is Nick Lee's. Reporting with uh, Jordan Comer outside in front of the flight pool. It's the first in school dance. Be on your best behavior so you can go get to dance your heart out. The dance is Thursday the 10th. Also, you need to bring money. It costs $2 and concessions are going to be sold. If you do not want to ha go have a blast, there will be a teacher in every grade that will stay in their room. So come dance the day away. Woo! Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> Thursday, October 3rd, was our first paper day. Our cheerleaders did their routine that got first place at the Tennessee Valley Fair and all the students did awesome fun games, such as the scavenger hunt, the Cheetos game, and the orange crush game. The pep rally really must have bumped up our spirit because we crushed the fall at owls. Here now is Fun Facts with Morgan and Shane. This is Shane Bowman. And Morgan sits with, with Fun, fun facts. facts. In sixth grade, Stacy Botts has an amazing voice. Late in the I stay up and think of you And I wish on a star Wherever you are You're thinking of me too I miss you And I'm dreaming Of you tonight And tomorrow I'll be holding you tight Cause there's no And here in my room, dreaming about you and me. In seventh grade, Timmy's a pansy can hold a handstand for a minute and 30 seconds. No. Now it's time for YouTube video of the week. Do you want to see how animals eat their food? Watch closely. No! <laughs> 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 Yeah!
our Lady Eagles volleyball team season ended as the district game was a game against Robertsville. The score was 25 to 17. This was a tough season for our Lady Eagles, but Coach Joy Smith is so proud, and she wants to let everyone know that next year's volleyball season will, for tryouts will be the end, at the end of this year. So, girls, try out. For the biggest win of the season, Jacksboro Eagles defeated the Fallen House with a score of 30 to 12. During the second quarter, quarterback Elijah Phillips caught a one-handed interception with a 13-yard touchdown. Shane Bolton says this was the biggest win for the season, and Coach Miller says beating Will Fallen is the sweetest dream chocolate milk. In other words, it was a sweet win. Now to Kyle, who sit down to get to know our basketball coaches. We are here with Coach Parker to ask him some questions about the basketball season. How have you guys prepared for the season? Well, in the summer, we go through about two months of going to team camps and playing a lot of games and just kind of getting a feel for where we're at. Uh, those guys put a lot of hard work in in the summer, then they get a couple of months off and then it's right back on us. Yeah. Was there anything special that the players had to do all this summer to do anything? Not anything special, just that, you know, the requirement is, is you don't miss practice. Uh, you know, those kids, they do a great job of, of committing and, and being in practice and, and really working hard when they're there. We don't, we don't ask them to do anything special, but, you know, if you're on the team, then you're going to work hard every day. How do you guys think you'll do against Powell Middle? Powell Middle, a, they're a great team. They've, they've got a great program, always have a lot of good athletes. Uh, but I think this year's team, uh, from top to bottom, we have an opportunity to be better than last year. So uh, I'm looking forward to that opportunity. How many new players do you have uh, Our varsity team, we've got a lot, of new, a lot of new faces. I mean, these guys have been around, but, uh, you know, we, we've always been eighth grade late. So uh, we've got a lot of new faces that are going to get a lot of playing time, but not necessarily new faces. Is there any new assistant coaches? No, our coaching staff are, remain the same with Chris Smith and Bo Benson. Uh, this will be our third year coaching basketball here at Jacksboro Middle School. And coming off last year's Final Four, uh, those guys are as good assistant coaches as you'll find, not only at the middle school level, but the high school level. Any prediction on how many games you'll win? I can't tell you how many games we're going to win, but I can tell you that we're going to go back to Sevierville. Well, there you have it, Coach Parker with the basketball season. We are here with Coach Snodgrass to ask her some questions about the basketball season. How have you guys prepared for the season? We, have, we always start uh, in May. We have a ball camp as well as a spring tryout, and then we go through the summer as far as conditioning, and uh, we attended a um, summer camp and competition in Sevierville this past year. Is there anything special that the players had to do with the summer to be on the team? Um, not to be on the team. They had already made the team in in May at the spring tryout. But we did practice them through uh, the summer as far as our conditioning. And like I said, we went to a, a ball camp as well. How do you guys think you'll do against Palmetto? I think... Um, I think we will be able to compete with them. I'm uh, hoping that um, that this year uh, our, our team, my girls, will be uh, more familiar with um, with having a Knoxville team come to us, and I I think that we can definitely win that game. How many new players do you have on the team? I probably have. 14 or 15 new players. Is there any new assistant coaches? Yes, Emily Hatmaker is my new assistant coach and um, I'm continuing to have Johnny Morris as my JB coach. Any predictions on how many games you'll win? Well, yeah, all of them. <laughs> well, there you have it. Here's Coach Snodgrass. Thank you. Thank you. We're looking for an Eagle mascot. Stop by the technology room if you're interested. This week we're doing fire prevention. We're going to show you a few clips of what you should and shouldn't do. This is what you shouldn't do. Yeah, on fire! Oh my yeah, on fire! On get down! It's on my back! Smoke it out! Smoke it out! Get it! Get it! Yeah, we got get it! Get on your back! Oh, God! No! 
Okay. That's what you shouldn't do. This is what you should do. Get down on your knees. Don't breathe the smoke. Put the shirt on your face. Get under the smoke. Stop drop and roll if you do catch fire. Call Don't stop one rolling. One. That's what you should and shouldn't do in case of a fire. Thank you. And we're back with announcements from the Trinities. I'm Trinity King and I'm Trinity Hood. And we're at TNT. It's Dynamite. Anyway, here's a club announcements. On October 3rd from 3 to 4, the skateboarding club held another meeting. More information to come. Also, James is going to have a new club. It's a dance team. There's a meeting held on October 3rd from 3 to 5. For sign ups. If you're interested, please contact Ms. Bumgardner or Mr. Rutherford. Student government is going to have a constitution ceremony. The ceremony will be held after fall break. The date is soon to come. Also, on October 7th, there are release sheets for anybody who wants to participate in SGA for any grades. These sheets will not be accepted if received any later than October 23rd. Louis Bluey was a success. Some of the students from here at JMS participated in the art contest. Although not all of our participants won, we had three winners. In first place in the middle school division, we had Brennan Tate from 6th grade. In second place, we had Cheyenne Cooper Tate, also from 6th grade. In the high school division, coming in second place, we had Cassidy Stokes. We would like to congratulate all the participants from this contest and the winners. Now to the K team with a movie review and an interview with our librarian, Ms. Olson. K team, movie reviews for you. I'm Kirsten. And I'm Caitlin. And this week's movie is Gravity and Romeo and Juliet. Gravity is about a medical engineer and an astronaut trying to survive and work together in space once an accident leaves them adrift. Romeo and Juliet, when two star-crossed lovers and two enemy families meet, forbidden love ensues. Thank you. I'm Kirsten. And I'm Caitlin. This is Kate Team with Miss Lawson. Miss Lawson, what do you do as a librarian? Well, I mostly just kind of hang out in the library and kill time. Yep. Not really. <laughs> uh, I have several jobs that I do. My favorite job, of course, is talking to the students about books and the newest books that are coming out and the most popular authors. But I also catalog books and I help the reading teachers uh, with the AR program um, and a lot of different things. What books do you recommend to students? Um, my favorite books are in series. I like to read series. I like to read the City of Ember series, and I like to read the uh, Blueford series. Um, there's uh, different ones. We have new ones out now. There's one series that's coming out that's called Rot and Ruin, and it's very good. It's uh, about uh, some teenagers that uh, have hard times in life, and it also teaches valuable lessons, and it's very interesting at the same time. And what do your workers do in here? They are most important to me. They do the same job as I do. Uh, some of them can probably even do it better. I believe if I was gone an entire day, my workers could come in here and run the, run the library without me. What, what advice do you have about this, for the students about their AR? Well, AR and reading is kind of a funny thing. It's like falling in love, okay? If you come across the right person, or if you come across the right book, then you're hooked, you're in love. You, uh, and if you, a lot of students come in and they say they've never read a book and they don't, they don't like to read books, and then we'll ask them about their favorite subjects or what they want to read about, and we'll show them a book that interests them, and then we've got them. They've been, they're in love with reading after that. Thank you. This is Kirsten Roberts and Caitlin Johnson with Miss Lawson. There's been rumors that Lake City might be getting a theme park similar to Dogwood, but with a coal mining theme. There are widespread rumors that say condition pumping millions of dollars into it to change the name from Lake City to Rocky Top. A young man was climbing over the Himalayas when he found many gems such as sapphires, rubies, and emeralds. He turned these over to the police on September 9th. These gems are worth $175,000. They will be split in the nine different people. 34-year-old Myron Carey of Sanford, Connecticut tried to High speed chase before she was shot and killed in front of the Capitol building. Now to a special report over the government. The United States government is partially shut down because Congress failed to reach an agreement on Sunday, September 29th. So far the signs are not encouraging. 
as Republicans and Democrats in Washington appear no closer to reaching agreement on a spending bill to keep the government running. Some effects will be national parks, museums, and zoos will, will shut down. So if you plan a trip to the Great Smoky Mountains, you have to cancel. Also, the licensing arm of the U.S. government, the Alcohol Tax and Trade Bureau, would need to halt all processing of permits and certificates of label approval, significantly impacting our micro distillery boomlet. Obama on Tuesday accused conservatives in the House of Representatives of waging an ideological crusade by making government funding, conditioning on gutting his landmark health care law. His top foe, Republican House Speaker John Boehner, said Obama was pursuing a scourge policy by refusing to negotiate as the rhetoric hit new heights and hopes faded for a swift end to the standoff. Another effect is that the Bureau of Consular Affairs, which confers passports, will certainly be shuttered. So if you're planning to celebrate harvest season, harvest season in the south of France or want to duck off to the streetcars in Singapore, but your passport is about to expire, you might be out of luck. <coughs> On Tuesday, Obama said, this Republican shutdown did not have to happen. I want every American to understand why it did happen. This is Colby Cox, Noah Smith, Zach Davidson, and Nick Lees giving a special report on the government shutdown. And now to the close with an interview from Melinda. We're here in the office with Melinda Riggs for a special interview. So, Melinda, do you have any kids? I have two daughters. Autumn is 19 and Jessa is 5. What's your favorite food? My favorite food is probably all food. I feel you, girl. Okay, <laughs> what, what do you do for the school? I do all things that involve state testing, like your benchmarks, your TCAP tests, writing assessments, anything like that comes through me before it gets to you. You like what you do? I do like what I do. What's your favorite music? Favorite music is Christian contemporary, a little bit of country. Do you have any pets? I have two dogs. Tom is a basset hound, Ellie Mae is a pug, and then I have two cats. They don't quite have names, they just answer to what they're called. <laughs> What's your favorite color? Favorite color is pink. What was your favorite grade in school? My favorite grade in school was senior year. This has been an interview with Melinda Riggs. Our website, www.jacksboromiddleschool.webs.com, is hosting a comment competition. The way you need to enter this com comment competition is you need to go to the website and comment. However many times you comment is the number of times your name will be put in the drawing. If you are drawn from the drawing, you will get an award. Drawings will be held monthly. Okay, On October 9th, Fields of Faith was held at Campbell County, Campbell County High School. Guest speaker Inky Johnson came earlier today to speak to our students. Noah and Nick got the chance to have an interview with him. Here's a look at it. Hello, my name is Noah Smith, and that's Nick Lees, and we're with the Eagle Eye News, the news station here at the school, and we'd like to ask you a few questions about your trip to Campbell County and your past football experience. Absolutely. Um, first, why did you choose Campbell County? I know you came for Field of Faith, but you could have been anywhere, right? but why did you choose Campbell County? Man, uh, the purpose is so great, you know, for what they're doing, and, uh, you know, Fields of Faith is about honoring Jesus Christ. And uh, I'm all about that, and I'm honored, you know, just to be a part of it, you know. So I'm doing it for one reason, and that's to bring people closer to God and hopefully save some souls in the process. Okay. What prompted you to speak at Fields of Faith and here at Jacksboro Middle School? You could have easily turned it down, and we were thrilled to have you. Why us? Man, because uh, anytime I get the opportunity to speak, you know, it's a, it's a great feeling, but also it's an awesome responsibility to God. And so uh, when they first contacted me about, you know, speaking at Fields of Faith, the question that I had for them was this, you know, can I get in some of the surrounding schools and speak and share with the kids? Because that's something that's very important to me, the plight of young people in our world. And so I love giving back, man. I love being able to go in and inspire and spark a dream in a young individual that may not have had a dream or goals or hopes and aspirations to do great things. And so I just wanted to make myself available to the community wherever I go. Yeah, it says here that you've been named to the Southeastern Conference 2013 Football Legends yeah. class. <coughs> and you're one of the 14 former SEC stars selected for this year's honor, uh, year's honors at the annual SEC Legends Dinner, mm -hmm. presented by AT&T, and it will be held on December 6th yeah. at the Hay Hayat 
Regency in Atlanta and the group will also be recognized prior to the SEC football championship game, which will be held at the Georgia Dome on Saturday, December 7th. How does this make you feel? Oh, man, uh, first and foremost, you know, glory to the Creator, man, to the Most High, to God, to Jesus Christ. Um, it's an awesome feeling because I put in a lot of work. You know, the University of Tennessee, I put in a lot of work before that moment, but the, the kicker for me is this. All the people that sacrificed so much for me, all the people that believed in me and saw something in me when I couldn't see it in myself, they get to enjoy this moment with me because this moment is happening in Atlanta, Georgia, which is my hometown. And so uh, it's just great, man, to let the people that believed in me, that the people that sacrificed so much for me get to see this moment unfold and be a part of it because they helped create the person that I am. And so it's, it's pretty cool, man. I'm, I'm excited. I'm stoked about it. I can't wait until that day. You know, it'll be a, it'll be a special moment. We may have a big party or something, you know, <laughs> celebrate it. Here's how the SEC describes you. Inky Johnson played in 23 games for Tennessee from 2004 to 2006 before a career-ending injury, injury cut short of a promising career. Johnson started eight games in his career, including six in 2005 and the first two games in 2006. He finished his career with 41 tackles, one sack, three and a half tackles for a loss, ten pass breakups, one interception, one forced fumble, and one fumble recovery. He opened his 2006 season with six tackles, one TFL, and one PBU in one season, opening win over California, but suffered a career-ending shoulder injury in the subsequent week over Air Force. Are you proud of your accomplishments in your football career? Absolutely. Uh, I'm proud of them. I think, you know, as as you just read right there, my 2006 off to a really strong start, you know, but uh, everything happens for a reason, but I'm extremely proud of the things I accomplished on the field, but more proud of the things I have accomplished off of the field as well. And uh, football is a great game, man. It's a great game, man. Uh, I love it. You know, it made me the individual that I am right now today. Uh, it also says here that since your injury, you have since used your story of overcoming ad adversity and adapting to change to help mentor unprivileged youth in Knoxville and your hometown of Atlanta. Why did you tell your story and why did you choose to mentor the unprivileged kids? Uh, because I was underprivileged, but I chose to tell my story, you know, because I saw the impact that it had on individuals. And so if it empowers, if it enriches, if it inspires, if it motivates, if it educates another individual, you know, by me sharing what I have been through in my experiences in life, in my circumstances, in my situations, I'm all about that. Because leadership is this. Leadership is not learning something. Leadership is not going through something and keeping it to yourself. Leadership is learning. Leadership is going through different experiences and learning what you can from them, but passing it on to the next individual so they can cope, so they can get through it, you know? So that's why I share what I've been through, just to try to help another individual get through what they may be doing, to be a blessing to other people. And one last question, what do you plan to do in the future? What do I plan to do in the future? Man, um, I'm just a humble servant. You know, I got a lot of things going on, you know, God has blessed me extremely um, with some incredible stuff, but, uh, you know, I'm just planning on being a humble servant, you know, being a father, to my children, you know, a husband to my wife, big brother to my three little sisters, and a, an awesome son to my parents. But uh, I just plan on paying my rent for living and making an impact in this world for the greater good and adding to the culture in a great way. This is Noah Smith. And Nick Lees. Noah with, and Nick. <laughs> reporting with Inky Johnson in Miss Wells' office. Shockley again back to throw as time. And there's a player down at the eight yard line it looks like it's jason allen in 2005 star defensive back jason allen suffered a season-ending injury against georgia stepping up in his place was sophomore inky johnson here's a corner blitz shockley reads it and tucks it up he's still on the run now he loses the football and scooped up by tennessee scooped up by inky johnson and tennessee comes up with a turnover i hate i had to come in and start that way with somebody getting injured but it was a great feeling and he did everything to motivate me and get me ready. Yeah, I was a little nervous and happy at the same time. You know, it was an exciting feeling. Defensive back coach Larry Slade knew that Inky was ready for the task ahead of him in his first start against Alabama. Inky has always seen himself as a starter. 
and, and when I when we put him in the game, we knew we were putting a starter in the game. So not I didn't really worry a whole lot about it. Slade told me they was going to try to come at me and just have that tough skin because I knew they was going to come at me and I was ready and I was prepared. And prepared he was. Three plays, they went after Inky Johnson all three times. He popped him and stripped the ball out. Things were looking up for Inky going into the 2006 season until disaster struck in the fourth quarter against Air Force. Carney being blitzed, but he gets up, fires the ball down the sideline. And then Inky is slow to get up. Inky knocked the Air Force runner, Justin Handley, out of bounds, but Inky is still down. When I hit him, I blanked out for a minute, and, uh, you know, they took me out from the uh, stretcher. And I remember when I got to the hospital, you know, all the people standing over me in the ER and all that telling me it's going to be okay, and everybody was by my side with me 100%. You know, when I went in and when I came out of surgery, my coaches and teammates, they supported me a lot, man. They brought me through it a lot, and they stayed with me right by my side through it all. After surgery, Inky went through months of recovery, but unable to continue his football career. My road to recovery has been good, man. You know, my training staff, you know, they're working with me. They're great training staff, you know. God's working on my body every day. I thank him for my healing every day. Despite the injury, Inky still continues to take an active part with the volunteer secondary. I'm slowly moving into that student coaching role. I'm going to some meetings, you know, helping some players out on the field. I just stay and build a relationship with my teammates and my coaches even better. He has that, that uh, demeanor about him that says win. He has that demeanor that says victory. And, and he has a uh, peace with him that <laughs> it's kind of hard to explain. And I don't think we humanly can explain it. But I just know that, uh, that that has a tremendous impact on his teammates. Johnson's recovery is not only an inspiration to his teammates, but also for the fans he played for. It was a tough, it was a tough break for Inky. It was a tough break tough thing for the team, but uh, Inky has a, has a heck of a testimony and, and uh, a lot of people are, um, you know, turning their lives around as a result of what happened to Inky. A life-changing moment came when I got injured, but, you know, I took it in stride because God does everything for a reason. And, you know, we can't sit there and complain about it because everything happened for a reason, you know. It could be a blessing and it can be a curse, but in my place, I took it as a blessing and roll with it. For Inside the Orange, I'm Drew Walker. Thanks now, Nick. Now to the principal's desk. With Start from the principal's desk, desk with Mr. Rutherford. Rutherford. Good afternoon, students. Uh, this is Mr. Rutherford. Got a few announcements I'd like to make. First of all, we want to congratulate our football team on their victory over La Follette. Uh, Thursday, October the 3rd, their 30 to 20, or excuse me, 30 to 12 win. They retain the Egg Bowl Trophy here at Jacksboro. We're very proud of them, proud of all of our students on their behavior last night at the game. Just a few announcements concerning upcoming events. On uh, October the 8th and 9th, we'll have the Explore test for 8th grade. That's a test to determine, uh, I guess, how well the students, if they took the ACT now, how well they would do, and thing, determine their interest and things that they'll be successful in in high school. Also, as a result of our victory on Thursday night, we will be hosting the playoff game. However, that playoff game will be held on Thursday, October the 17th, here at Jacksboro Middle School. Uh, the opponent will be determined next uh, Thursday night. Um, the second six weeks grading period midterm ends on October the 11th. Um, and then when we come back from fall break, which is a very important time for students, uh, they will be having fall break from October the 14th through the 18th. When they come back from fall break, uh, then they will be issued their midterms on Wednesday, October the 23rd. Um, basketball season is about to start. Um, we will host our first home basketball game in November. Uh, we'll um, have um, Clinton here at home and Jefferson home the week of uh, November the 18th through the 21st. We wish both girls and boys basketball teams great success. Um, also, fall pictures were made uh, on Wednesday, and the makeup date for fall pictures will be on October the 30th, October the 30th. 
this year we'll probably also let our students have a dress up day on October the 31st for uh, their favorite book character since it's Halloween and that's just some of the activities we have going on here at Jacksboro Middle School and students we're very proud of your behavior and just keep up the good work. Thanks for watching Eli News. See you next time.